Good evening. We begin here at five with breaking news. Charges have been filed against the man accused in Saturday's deadly mass shooting. We just learned 43 year old Benjamin Smith faces, among other charges, one count of second degree murder and four counts of attempted murder. This after police say Smith opened fire on a crowd at a racial justice rally in Northeast Portland. Our Maggie Vespa joins us now with more on the charges and what neighbors are saying about Smith. Maggie? Yeah, Laura, we'll start with those charges. We know Smith faces nine counts total, including several for assault, and his bail is set at $2 million. Now keep in mind, Benjamin Smith is, authorities said today, in the hospital, still in serious condition. This after police said someone in the crowd of demonstrators fired back at him on Saturday to try and stop the shooting. Court documents show Smith lives in an apartment complex near Northeast Portland's Normandale Park, where this rally and shooting happened on Saturday. Witnesses said he confronted people blocking traffic for the demonstration, called them, quote, violent terrorists and ordered them to leave. They said he then got angry and started shooting. One demonstrator said uh, police said fired back and shot Smith in the hip. Six people total were shot. One woman you just saw her ID'd as 60 year old June Knightley died. Neighbors today have told us they're sadly not surprised. They have said Smith was often angry. They said he blames, for instance, homeless people for the city's housing crisis and was increasingly fixated on the racial justice protests of 2020. They also said he was angry about anti-police rhetoric. And late today, I talked to his next door neighbor. He was always a little bit aggressive um, and kind of protective of his property. Um, there were multiple times over the years that he's brandished guns out at people going through our, our trash in the courtyard. That was one thing. If you ever got him talking, he would end up talking about whatever gun he's, he's got, he's, you know, new one coming or whatever. It was just he, he always had them out. Chelsea Blando adding there that when she heard her neighbor had been named the suspect in this shooting, she thought it was only a matter of time before someone pushed him too far. A Laurel, again, the update tonight. 43-year-old Benjamin Smith has now been charged with murder and with multiple counts of attempted murder in Saturday's deadly mass shooting at that racial justice protest. Well, Maggie, you mentioned June Knightley, who died in the shooting. What do we know about the other victims who were shot and survived? Sure, there are details in these court documents that were just filed. Four people were wounded but survived. Two of them are still in the hospital, and prosecutors say one of those two was shot in the neck and paralyzed from the neck down. That person is in critical condition. And the second person of those two was shot multiple times, including in the abdomen, and is also still in the hospital. Two other victims were shot and have since been released. And again, Benjamin Smith, the alleged shooter, also still in the hospital tonight. <sighs> Just a terrible, terrible situation. Thank you, Maggie. Sure. Portland's mayor and police chief are speaking publicly for the first time since the three deadly shootings over the weekend. Among other things, they're asking for patience as the investigations play out. And that includes the investigation into what happened at Normandale Park. Mike Benner continues our team coverage. This was a deadly, difficult and disturbing weekend for our city. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler speaking publicly for the first time since the violent weekend in Portland. The mayor was joined at a virtual press conference Tuesday by federal and local law enforcement officials, including Portland Police Chief Chuck Lavelle. This is probably one of the most deadly and challenging weekends our city has experienced. Uh, it's also one of the most heartbreaking. Among the deadly shootings the chief is referencing is the one at Normandale Park. The chief describes a confrontation between armed resident Ben Smith and armed protesters that left 60-year-old Brandy Knightley dead. This was a very challenging and dangerous scene for many tactical reasons. Obviously, responding officers didn't know who, who the shooters were, how many, where they were at, and other details. Aside from saying evidence was taken from the scene and asking for its prompt return, authorities are saying very little about the shooting. Some will argue that's a calculated move to control the narrative. But Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt says that's not the case at all. Our biggest uh, responsibility is to build a case and make sure that those who uh, cause harm are held accountable. That's what our focus is. DA Schmidt's office, along with local and federal investigators, will be tasked with determining a motive behind the deadly shooting. Here's what the U.S. Attorney for the District of Oregon said when asked about the possibility of this being a hate crime. If Evidence has developed that any federal crimes were committed there. Uh, the United States Attorney's Office will 
make the decision whether federal charges should be brought. For now, we're asked to remember the victims of the weekend of violence. I want to note with deep sadness the injuries and the terrible loss of life the collective Portland family has endured. I'm grieving along with those who've been impacted by this weekend's events. Authorities acknowledge it has been difficult getting some of the witnesses to talk to them about what happened at Normandale Park. Officials want to remind those witnesses that providing information to law enforcement is absolutely crucial and anonymous tips can be passed along through Crime Stoppers. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. I imagine it was a very harrowing experience for uh, those folks that are up there. We continue our coverage tonight of this enormous car pileup in eastern Oregon. Did you see this? I-84 is back open after more than 170 vehicles crashed in snowy conditions yesterday. This happened between Pendleton and LaGrande. Multiple agencies worked through the night to get that interstate back open. And as Ashley Korslin reports, it was a team effort that took hours. Incredible video shows the aftermath of a 170 vehicle pileup on a snowy Interstate 84 in eastern Oregon. A crash so massive it spanned nearly two miles between Pendleton and LaGrande. You know, it looked like it was a chain reaction. Somebody crashed and other people crashed into them and pretty soon it was blocked up for miles. Tom Strandberg with the Oregon Department of Transportation says multiple agencies work together to clear the mess from troopers to firefighters to half a dozen tow companies. It was all hands on deck. That was probably one of the, um, the saving uh, events uh, of the evening. Each one of them brought uh, at least you know, one or more vehicles. So we had multiple tow pieces of tow equipment up there. At least 19 people were taken to the hospital to get checked out. As I saw semi-trucks in front of me starting to jackknife and hit each other. Including Keith Biggs, who broke two ribs in the crash. I just saw that semi-trucks were still coming and there was no way they were going to be able to stop. He was on his way back to Portland from Idaho when a semi crashed into a car behind him, pushing it into Keith's car. Ouch, I think I have a broken rib. It was quite frightening and I was pinned in, so um, I was able to get move around in the car, but I had to crawl out of this um, sunroof to get out of the car. In total, 71 people were shuttled out on buses. A local taxi company and church also provided vehicles to get others to a reunification site at the Pendleton Convention Center. I mean, this car is just demolished. And after hours of hard work, Crews reopened the eastbound lanes of I-84 around midnight and the westbound lanes early Tuesday morning. Everyone involved, thankful it ended the way it did. It could have been very tragic. It doesn't sound like uh, it was as bad as it could have been. Just the way that there was no deaths, I'm just absolutely shocked at that because it was horrific, the damage up there. Ashley Korslund, KGW News. A harrowing experience is right, and hats off to those crews who did such a great job clearing it. Oregon State Police hasn't announced what caused that pileup yet, but they're recommending drivers avoid the area due to hazardous winter conditions. Also in eastern Oregon, an explosion at a food plant in Hermiston created this huge fire today. It happened this afternoon at Shearer Foods off Highway 207. Employees called 911 reporting a boiler explosion. According to the East Oregonian, seven people were taken to the hospital. All are expected to survive. Homes nearby were put on notice they might have to evacuate because of poor air quality from the smoke, but that has not happened yet.